Hello again, it's Mark, and I'm here with the first installment of what we expect to be an ongoing series of uh, short videos about the full moons of each uh, month as they pass through the year. Uh, one of the things that we do in the Aethiopagan community that's kind of interesting is that because we have 13 Aethiopagan principles, what, what has been done at the suggestion of people in the community is to map that list of full moons onto the calendar of principles, or rather the other way around, to map the list of principles onto the calendar of full moons so that the first full moon of the year becomes the first principal uh, moon, the second becomes the second principal moon, etc., on around to the 13th of the year and then starting over. So we're coming up to January 6th, and that means it's the first full moon of the year. And that will therefore be the full moon that's associated with the first Aethiopagan principle, which is skepticism and critical thinking. And skepticism and critical thinking are very important in our religious path and practice, because unlike many other religions, we don't subscribe to the supernatural, and we believe that reason and evidence are the best ways of understanding what's most likely to be true in the world. So um, what we do um, as Aethiopagans is we subscribe to the first Aethiopagan principle, which is critical thinking and, uh, and skepticism. That's not because they're more important than any of the other principles. They're not in priority order. They're just in random order. Uh, but that happens to be the first. And so using our reasoning faculties and our understanding of uh, the quality of evidence, whether it's um, something uh, very low quality in terms of its re uh, reliability, like an individual's reported subjective experience, or whether it's a very high degree of confidence, like a meta study of many scientific studies that all seem to point in a particular direction. Those are the kinds of standards that we use to determine what is most likely to be true. Uh, in the rest of the pagan community, that's not so true often. Uh, there is something that is called a UPG or a uh, uh, unverifiable personal gnosis, which is this idea that you can come to know something as a fact through an individual subjective experience. We as Aethiopagans reject that idea outright. Uh, the human brain is far too fallible, it fools itself far too often, and there are far too many circumstances that can confuse us in understanding what it is that we actually experienced, as well as the fact that our memories keep getting, being continually rewritten over and over and over as we recall them throughout our lives. So it's important for us to be cautious when it comes to accepting what we believe uh, we experienced, um, particularly when it comes to associating a story or a causality to that experience. Um, yes, you may have seen something levitating off a table, the odds are very good that that was not a violation of the laws of physics, rather that it was something happening in your brain that made you see that, or there was something physical that was raising that off the table that you couldn't see. So that's a, a real short synopsis of the, uh, the Aethiopagan first principle, skepticism and critical thinking. Uh, when it comes to the full moon, what that means is that this then, January 6th, is the skeptics moon. And that's an opportunity for us to contemplate um, the, uh, the history of science, the history of uh, people pursuing knowledge about what is likely to be true in the world. Um, some people have sacrificed their lives for, the, the, for simply saying what was it turned out to be true about the nature of the world. Galileo, for example, was threatened with torture unless he withdrew his observation of the movement of the moons around Jupiter. Um, he saw them move. He documented that they moved, um, but that violated what the Catholic Church wanted to believe about the nature of the universe, and he was forced to retract. Uh, the good news is that his writings spread throughout Renaissance Europe and influenced lots of other people, whether or not he had actually recanted what he said or not. So that's a little bit of a hero story for the end of our video for today. Um, hope that you're enjoying this new refreshed content for the YouTube channel. And we'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye.